So I brought my firebox freestyle out in the woods today so that I could demonstrate how I use it in three-sided mode. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, before we get started, there is one question that I need to answer right up front, which is why? Why would I take one of the four sides off of my Firebox Freestyle and create a three-sided stove? Well, there are a number of pros and cons, but the two right up front, the two major ones, number one is weight. By taking one side off of this, not even including the accessories and other components that go with the stove, but just by taking one side off, I've reduced the weight by 25%. That's not insignificant if weight is important to you. The other reason is now this is not something that will benefit me a whole lot but we're going to demonstrate how it works and that is thermal draft and thermal columns. So here I live on sea level or just above where I'm at right now and the air pressure is relatively the same here but if I was at a much higher altitude and the air was rarefied meaning there's less oxygen in the air a fire can struggle to really get going. It needs help. And the way you can help a fire is by increasing airflow. And that's one of the things that this will do for you. You can get a fairly dramatic increase in airflow by creating a thermal column using what's often referred to as the chimney effect. We'll demonstrate that and I'll explain it more as we go along. So why don't I take this down to my bench top. We'll go over how I turned it into a three-sided stove. I'll demonstrate how it can be set up for use with an alcohol stove and then I'll demonstrate it in use with wood. All right, before we get started, a couple things I want to mention. The wind has picked up, so I apologize now if there is excessive wind noise. It's hard to work around. I'm doing my best. And the other thing is, if you see me slap at myself, it's because because the deer flies are out. I'm, I'm okay with black flies and mosquitoes, but deer flies, yeah, okay. So those are my excuses, let's put them aside. So what I've done is I've opened up my full kit of the Firebox Freestyle, and I just wanna point out that this is the titanium version. And uh, I, you know, really it makes sense if you're going for an ultra light stove that you can use with alcohol, wood, or other fuels, then the titanium version is the one to go with. So that's the reason why I brought the titanium version out with me today. Now you can do this with the stainless steel version, it'll work just fine and you will reduce a significant amount of weight by turning it into a three-sided three stove. But uh, if you're really looking for the weight saving, which is obviously one of the reasons why you want to do this, it's the titanium version that it, you're going to get the most benefit from. So let me show you what we're going to not carry not carry if we're taking this out into the woods. So first off, here's my Firebox Freestyle. Went back in four-sided configuration and folded up for storage. And I'll show you how you turn it into a three-side in a minute. So what am I not going to carry on any given day that I do decide to go out with the three-sided version? Number one, I'm going to give up the box, the box itself that it came in. I know it's a fire pan. I know it helps with safety. But if you're looking to give up weight, give up the box and you can look at other ways of making sure that you're safe using the stove. So the box has weight. I'm giving up the grate. Really there is not enough room on top of the three-sided stove to make use of the grate. So the grate stays home. Obviously the ranger band stays home. I am keeping all four of my fire sticks and you'll see why in a minute because you can make use of those especially if you want to use small pots and an alcohol stove. And of course I'm giving up the floor plate which is the fire grate so all of that stays home with me on that day plus one more item which is side number three uh, okay so what are you going to do if you don't bring the case well if you recall if you bought one of these it also arrived in a cotton stuff sack and that cotton stuff sack is perfect for transporting you really don't have to transport all of this inside of the metal case unless you're looking to use it as a floor plate which is legitimate again not for this purpose though so we're, we're going to put all of the things that we want to take with us on the day we're going ultralight by re just taking the cotton stuff sack. But first we have to take off panel number three. Easy enough to remember, right? Three-sided stove, take off panel number three. And just as a reminder, each of the panels has holes right here indicating panel one, two, three, and four. So obviously this is panel number three. So I start by pulling the pins on either side of panel number three. Take panel number three out, 
that's going to stay home, as is one of the legs. That's going to stay home. Now, I'm just going to reassemble the stove very easily, very quickly, and now I am in three-sided mode. Very, very stable when you set it up like this. Uh, you know, you turn the legs out, you get all the stability you want. Now, there is no bottom grate. There is no fire grate. Anything that you set up with this and, and sticks is going to go right through to the ground. We'll talk more about that when I do set it up with sticks. So why did I keep the four fire sticks with this? Well, probably I could get away with three of them, but it's you might as well take four because if you lose one, you're going to wish you had brought the fourth one. So uh, by the way, I'm working on a log bench here, so it's a little awkward, but hopefully you'll be able to say everything I'm doing. All right, number one, alcohol stoves. So on any given day, you are looking just to make yourself some water for coffee, tea, or a rehydrated lunch, then alcohol is often the way to go. Now, Steve demonstrates using this, Steve Despain from the Firebox Stove, demonstrates using this with the Tokes Titanium Siphon Stove. Great little stove. I don't have one and they're hard to get right now. I think there's been a run on them, maybe because of Steve. And, you know, I would love to have one. In fact, I do intend on purchasing one when they become available. But I also decided I would try one out by buying one of the, whoops, sorry, one of the Lexata siphon stoves, virtually identical in design and construction with one big difference, this is larger. Not a lot larger, but a little bit larger than the Tokes. And as a result, it doesn't drop into the triangular stove or the three-sided version, or just drop in. It will go in, let me demonstrate. First off, you're gonna need one of your fire sticks and you're gonna set it at the height that you want it to support the uh, alcohol stove. So for me, on the outside rim, on all four sides, or all three sides in this case, are a set of slots. On the second from the bottom slot, I'm going to go across like this. So down inside, you can see that I have the fire stick spanning the triangle. And now I can put in my alcohol stove and support it at just the right height. Now, it's snug. It's, as you can see, it's not going to drop in, but it goes in. It goes in and it stays there. It's not so tight and hard to get in and out that is unusable. In fact, I actually think it works quite well. It's a snug fit. I'll say that. It is a snug fit. You only need one fire stick to suspend it. And at the height I've suspended it is just under an inch and a half from the top of the stove. So it's ready to use. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is you put your alcohol in it, light it up. And now you can use, I guess there's a number of things you could use with this, depending on what you brought with you for a kettle or a pot. But what's ideal about this, if again, if you're going minimalist, ultralight, take one of your fire sticks, put it across the widest point on top, and now you can take a titanium mug like this. This is my 650 milliliter Keith titanium mug with lid, and it fits on there perfect. I actually think this is a great combination. I have a larger titanium kettle I could have brought with me, but for this purpose, I think this is pretty much exactly what you want. Most mountain house style or freeze-dried meals take about two cups, some a little bit more, some a little bit less. So you can easily put two cups of water inside of this and bring it to a boil. So that's one alternative. Actually, I carry it in combination with my Keith titanium water bottle, so that also will fit on top. Uh, you know, these aren't the most efficient boilers that you can use, or, but they work. You know, if that's what you want to use, you can use your uh, water bottle to boil with, but it is tall and narrow, so it's not going to be exposed with like a wide surface would be to a lot of flame. Again, it does work. So that is how you would use the alcohol stove with the three-sided version. All right, now what I'm going to do is set it up in the fire pit and show you how to use it with wood. All right, because it is breezy today, I have set up the Firebox Freestyle in my fire pit so that it can act as a wind wall or a windscreen for this. So it might be a little shadowed because of the trees, but hopefully you can see what I'm doing well enough. 
So a couple of things. One is, as I mentioned a minute ago, there is no fire grate in the bottom of this. Any sticks that you put in are going to go right through to the ground. That's intentional and that's okay. But you still have to be careful about what surface you're burning on to make sure that you don't create any type of a fire hazard. I'm in a fire pit. This is a properly built fire pit with four inches of mineral earth on the bottom. And by the way, we had torrential rains last night, which is what allows me to do this as there is no fire ban on today. So it is quite safe for me to do it right here in this fire pit. However, if I was on a surface that I had some concerns about, a couple of things that you could do. One is bring along a piece of aluminum foil that you could put underneath this to catch the coals. And what's rapidly becoming my new favorite is this piece of fiberglass mat. I think I showed it in a recent video and I'll put a link to uh, where you can purchase one of these fiberglass mats on Amazon. I'll put that in the video description below. You can see I've been using it a fair amount. Uh, this thing folds down small. I mean, I can that small, you know, that's a fiberglass mat, 2.2 ounces. I mean, that's ridiculously light. And for the added safety that it gives you, you can use this on virtually any surface and ensure that you are going to prevent the heat from transferring through and creating a potential problem. But today I am just going to do it right in the fire pit here. Oh, speaking of weight, something I forgot to mention is what is the weight of the setup as you see it right now? If I include the four fire sticks, the titanium fire sticks, then I have a six ounce stove. Six ounces. Now I don't have the weights of the full kit with me, but I will put it on the screen. And of course we'll put the comparisons in the video description so you have those numbers to work with. But you know, I off the top of my head, we're very near half of the weight that we would be had I brought out the full kit, including the tin box that it goes with. All right, now a couple of things. If you're going to use this with wood, you're essentially creating what is often referred to as a Swedish fire torch. You could put in three big chunks of wood, hardwood ideally, and you'll have a long burning fire. But I'll tell you, it can be a challenge to get going, and I'll explain more in a minute. Alternatively, you could put in smaller sticks, quite a few vertically stacked sm smaller sticks in. They will light up faster, you'll get your thermal column, you'll get a lot of heat, but they won't last as long. Depends on what it is that you're doing. If you're just looking to bring water to a boil, you can do that with a lot of smaller sticks much more effectively and efficiently because they will ignite and you'll create that thermal column column much quicker. All right, so that's number one. Number two is work with your damper open. You need to have that exhaust room at the top of the stove for air to come up through the bottom and out while the fire is going and you have a pot on top. So leave that damper open. Next thing is maximum stick size, five and a half inches. So uh, did everybody bring their tape measure with them? Okay, well, here's the easiest thing to do. Measure it according to the top of the damper or the bottom of the damper where the damper opens. That's about five and a half inches from the ground. So that's what I did to cut the sticks that I have. Now I just want to show you, I have this little bundle of sticks, which is more than I'm going to need for this demonstration. In fact, I can't get them all inside. They came off of the end of this. So this is just the excess length that I cut away. So you can see this wasn't a big piece of wood. But what's that, three inches? Uh, yeah, just about three inches, maybe not even. Three inches that I cut off to get to the length about five and a half inches. And I just used the firebox freestyle itself to measure so that I could cut it. Then I split it into eight pieces. Now, I could try and jam all eight pieces in, but to be honest, uh, there's no real advantage to doing that. In fact, there's a disadvantage. You need airflow inside of here to allow the wood to ignite. You need some open area. And we're also going to be sticking a fire uh, lighter, a piece of wood wool down inside. So what I've just done, I've just tried to arrange the sticks so that I have a, a central area in the middle right here that is open for me to stick my fire lighter in and I'm going to get it down inside. When any type of Swedish fire torch, it really doesn't matter. It can be a challenge to get going. So is this cheating? Uh, maybe a little bit, but, <laughs> but I'm going to cheat today. I could have worked and created a 
you know, some, uh, what do you call it, birch bark and small twigs and everything else to see if I could get it going that way. But you can see I just took a little piece of wood wool and I'm just kind of opening it up a little bit so that I can uh, get the, it to accept the flame a little bit quicker. Now where's my lighter at? It is here. Oh, there it is. Okay. Let's see. And the wood wool is lit, but as you can see, it's very windy, so I just want to make sure that it keeps going. Wood wool. There is probably a product name for it, but as generically people refer to it as wood wool. It's just a shredded wood impregnated with wax and created into little bundles. I, I purchased mine at Canadian Tire, our local hardware store. And uh, it's, it's not a, a high quality brand of it, but it's functional. It's doing what it's supposed to be doing, right? So that's really all I can ask of it. You can see, I still have two pieces of wood that I couldn't get inside. So the stove does not have a lot of room, but for doing this, you really don't need a lot of room. I think my wood may be already starting to ignite. I'm gonna try and get that down a little lower. Because what I'm trying to do is get the flames to move into the column of wood but it's going to take a few minutes for this to really ignite. So rather than just watch the fire start up, I'll cut the camera now. I won't move it at all. I'll turn it back on once the wood is well ignited and we'll see just what kind of a torch this turns into. Because really it does. It, the thermal column, because it is taller than it is wide, creates that chimney effect and the air is moving up through the wood and it starts to increase velocity and that's how it works at high altitude. It's sucking the rarefied air, the thin oxygen air in through the, round the bottom of the sticks and up through the center. So that velocity is what's providing the extra oxygen to the combustion process. All right, I'll bring, bring it back in a, full, in a few minutes when this is well engaged. All right, in full disclosure, I did drop the level of the camera down just a little bit so that you can get a better appreciation for the flames as they come out of the top of the stove. And I don't know if you can hear this, I'll try and lean in, but it sounds like a rocket stove. There's actually a good roar taking place, indication of air rushing in through the bottom and coming up through the center. So you can see that is easily 10 inches and stretching to 12, 14 inches, that column of flame. That's what's known as a thermal column. So I have created an updraft like a rocket stove and that is because now the stove is so much taller in comparison to its diameter. Now, what I wanna show you is I'm going to put on one of the fire sticks again across the wider spans there so that this will work. And I have two items. So first I'm gonna put on my Uberlieben titanium castle, which runs about, I don't know, 13 centimeters in diameter. It's probably gonna smoke because of the stuff that's on the bottom. And it does. But what I should be seeing is flame is escaping. So there is still plenty of air for most of that smoke, by the way, is the tar and stuff off of the bottom of the pot and some of the stuff that it was stuck to on the ground. But flame has a tendency, yeah, now it's starting to happen. It wants to move up and out from underneath where the damper is. That's why it's so important to leave that damper open. You need to have that head space, the amount of space between the wood and the bottom of your pot and that damper open in order for air to continue to flow. So it's not actually putting the fire out at all. It's actually the pot itself that was doing most of the smoking. All right, what else can I use? I think I'll need to have a glove to put, oh, maybe not, not to put it on, maybe to get it off. But once again, here is my Keith Titanium uh, pot, uh, pot mug at 650 milliliters. I have a review on this along with that water bottle if you're interested. So it is dampening some. Yes, absolutely. It is dampening some, probably both of them. This does not have the tar in the bottom of the other one. So the smoke is being caused by the dampening, a little bit of dampening from on, being on top of there. But still now you can see clearly the, the flame coming out, out, out around is being drawn towards that opening at the, at the front of the stove where the damper is. And that's exactly the way it's supposed to operate. 
Now I am going to take this off and once again you can see that column of flame. Impressive column of flame, isn't it? Okay, it's, I actually I think I will put my water back on and make myself a cup of coffee and once this is burnt down and it's cool enough to handle again, we'll close this video up. All right, my firebox freestyle has cooled off enough for me to be able to handle it. And I think we can probably go over a few pros and cons before closing the video out. So right up front, the obvious pro is lightweight. Now, if you want to leave all the other accessories in the end, the fourth side of the stove at home, you can create an ultra light titanium wood stove that can also be used with an alcohol stove to uh, cook your meals and do whatever else you want to do. Now, I should point out this will not fit with the Trangia. So once you have it down to the three-sided version, you, you won't be able to put the Trangia inside. But as you saw, um, you can put the Lexata siphon stove is in, and it was built around the Tokes siphon stove. So those will fit in. And there are a number of other stoves that you can probably get inside of this, but anything the size of a Trangia is just not going to fit. So that's one of the definite pros, lightweight. There is still some versatility in this. The other one, as we mentioned right in the opening, is this will work better than a lot of other wood stoves will at higher elevations because where the air is rarefied, as it's called, with less oxygen density in it, it needs that velocity to really feed the oxygen to the combustion process. And that is accomplished by creating a thermal column, which is, you know, that chimney effect in action. Tall pieces of wood stack vertically drawing air in through the bottom with enough of a headspace on top and the damper open then you can get that momentum that flow of oxygen to really feed the fire and as you saw it works extremely effectively that way but there are some downsides. There are a few things you have to get up, give up. Number one, there's no fire grate in the bottom. So you know you're setting this on the ground with wood going right through to the bottom. And now that's not uncommon. People have been doing that for a long time with the small nano. So people would be used to doing that with this. Could be would just be an easy changeover to doing it with this stove as well. But as I mentioned, there are a few things you could do piece of aluminum foil or something else fireproof underneath it. I chose aluminum foil because it's so lightweight and has the versatility of being used for other things as well. That little fiberglass uh, fiberglass square at 2.2 ounces, that's worth taking with you whatever, whatever stove you're using. I think anyway, I, I pack it with all my stoves now that I have it. Uh, you're also giving up some volume or space on top. As you saw, no problem using my Uberliebman titanium castle that's around 13 centimeters or just over five inches in diameter, as well as something like a 750 milliliter pot or a water bottle for that matter. Um, and probably that's the best combination is something like a titanium 750 milliliter pot. That'll do most of what you need to do. It'll certainly make enough water for coffee and for rehydrating most meals. But when it comes to grilling the steak, that's not that this stove is for. Okay, now in full disclosure, I don't see myself carrying it this way very often. If I know I'm just going out for an afternoon hike and all I'm looking to do is make a cup of coffee and I just haven't decided whether or not I'm going to use alcohol or wood, then maybe this is what I will take with me because then I have the versatility of choosing one or the other. If I know ahead of time I'm just going to be using alcohol, I don't even need to drag this around. There are lighter ways to use an alcohol stove. Those little siphon stoves do have a cross stand intended to fit on top, and uh, that's all you need, really, and a windscreen of some type, of course. But if the possibility of using wood, which when I have the opportunity to do so, I like doing that, is using wood, then yeah, what? Well, sure, this makes a lot of sense. But most of the time, I'm probably going to be carrying the whole kit, all four sides, the fire grate, the fire sticks, the rubber band, and the grill for on top. And if I'm going to be doing that, carrying all that weight included in the tin uh, box, uh, why not just use it four sided for configuration? So that's just what you have to weigh out for yourself. Is there an advantage for you to strip it down to the bare minimum to get that ultra light, still reasonable performance out of it? 
or just use it in the four-sided. I'll use it in the four-sided more often than I do the three-sided, but it's good to know that you can use it in the three-sided configuration. Okay, that's, I think, all I need to show you for this video, but I will open it up to you. Do you have any comments on using this in the three-sided configuration? Is there anything I missed doing it? I showed just two ways of using it, with wood and with alcohol. Um, if you have any questions that I need to answer, as I mentioned, I will be putting the specifications for the stove, both in the complete kit and the minimal stripped down kit just so you can do a weight comparison but it will be in titanium i think that's the best way to do this as i mentioned earlier if you have any comments any questions put them in the comments section below but until next time get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference bye for now